We're with uh, Mark Chapman, he's chief engineer for the Bloodhound land speed record attempt, uh, hoping to do a thousand miles an hour eventually. Uh, Mark, good morning. Good morning. I understand you're in new premises, you've got a car in build. Tell me what's going on with this project. It's been fantastic. We've just been moving from our sort of fairly small building to a much larger facility in Bristol and we're seeing a lot more of the car come into, come into sort of fruition if you like. The design's progressing really well. Um, we've just come out with a, a revised updated plan so we're going to be running out in South Africa basically this time in two years time. So summer 2015 we'll be out there attempting our first, first attempts at the record. Well, Mark, we've got a fantastic opportunity here. There's an exhibition of LSL cars. I wonder if you could uh, run a professional ruler over them and give your opinion, please. Fantastic, I'd love to. Let's go over and have a look. Thank you. Behind me here, we see the Golden Arrow. So this was out and out designed as a land speed record car. And for its day, fantastic advance. So it's using a fin to keep the car stable, going in a straight line. But actually, interestingly, to reduce the resistance through radiators, what he used was, was ice. The, the using ice to cool the engine. Actually on the Bloodhound, we've got this Cosworth Formula One engine that's pumping our um, 700 horsepower pump for the uh, peroxide for the rocket. We use an ice water tank to do that. So it's very strange that, you know, so 80, 80 years, 90 years on, the technology is still there, there are that we're still using. Parallels still there. parallels there. And of course, any discussion of land speed record cars can't ignore the Campbells, the father and son, Malcolm and Donald. Um, we've got two cars here. Should we go and have a look at those? Yeah, certainly. Well, here we are surrounded by uh, Bluebird Blue, um, the famous colour of the Campbell uh, land speed record cars. There is a missing link here, though. You were telling me there's a Campbell car they haven't got here. Would you like to explain how that led to the development of the first Campbell car, the Malcolm Campbell car? So basically what, what we had when they were doing the, this battle between trying to find running on Daytona Beach with Campbell and Seagrave going to and fro breaking records, Campbell needed to find somewhere else to run. So he found a place called Vinoit Pan in South Africa um, and he took a car there in 1929. Unfortunately, that's at altitude. He didn't have a supercharged engine. Golden Arrow had just gone to Daytona Beach and actually he no longer had a car that could break the record, had to come back from South Africa and basically had to look at finding a car that would run at Daytona very, very fast. And he convinced to be able to have the same engine that was in the Golden Arrow, but a supercharged version, 400 more horsepower. And that developed into the Bluebirds that we see here car we're standing in front of is the last wheel driven but it was powered by a gas turbine effectively a jet engine. So we see Donald Campbell um, through his evolution used a Proteus gas turbine so this is a, a turboprop engine it's driving a very very advanced car it's got a, a, a metallic composite structure um, jet engine all-wheel drive and actually the sophistication of this car it achieved you know 400 miles an hour and if that car was to run today, there's a good chance it could take the existing wheel-driven record. I think it's 468 miles an hour from Turbinator. So very, very advanced car. Even today? Even today. When this car was the, the last of that era, and from there we went to the thrust cars, so the, the jets and the rocket cars that came along in the 60s. And we've got one of those here, Gary Gebelich's uh, Blue Flame. Should we go and have a look at that? Yeah. So here we are standing in front of Gary Gabalich's 1970 Blue Flame, 630 miles an hour, the first of the rocket-driven cars, really, that was really successful. Um, tell me a bit about it. I mean, the fantastic difference from moving from wheel-driven to the thrust cars is you have this opportunity to make them very, very small. So if you look at the car, it's a fantastic streamlined pencil-like shape. And this had a, a rocket that was powered with um, high-test peroxide and natural gas. Um, the issue with thrust cars is they accelerate very slowly, so actually to get the rocket working and the amount of fuel he could carry on this car, he had to be pushed to over, I think it's about 150 miles an hour before he actually lit the rocket. And there was a, a man there that basically dropped a, dropped a towel when the, the car had peeled off out the way, and then off he went and he literally lit the blue touch paper. Oh, fantastic. So, absolutely amazing cars. Thank you very much. Very best of luck in the next couple of years, building up, getting your sponsorship and engineering, and uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.